Here's a story. I was waiting there for you that. go. <laughs> um, of Alan, who lives on the internet, and Strawberry, and of course he's a brilliant educational technologist that we all know. I don't pay her for that. So, <laughs> Mia, she's an English prof at Kane University. It's not pronounced Keen. I'm still getting that difference. And she teaches classes in electronic literature. And in January 2017, we hatched a crazy idea. Uh, we were at the DML uh, Digital Media and Learning uh, Conference, which is at UC Irvine, and we decided to make some digital alchemy through a networked digital storytelling class. But that's really another story, but there's a link for that. <laughs> um, in between that time, uh, in August 2017, I made a move from New Jersey to Norway, um, my sabbatical year, uh, where I took the position of Fulbright Professor of Digital Culture at the University of Bergen. But there's a situation. There were five MA uh, students in writing studies that Mia was advising um, who needed a thesis advisor. And somehow, she cooked up this idea that I could do this from Arizona. And he certainly did. Um, so no surprise, we decided to roll out a seminar that fall when I first arrived in Norway that was a co-locational seminar. Uh, the seminar was called um, ResNetSem, that's the hashtag, which stood for Research Network. Networked Seminar. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, one of the interesting things was that my students were, uh, they were doing two semesters of the MA thesis, and Mia's were in a one semester a course on a research course, and that's the, the course that Nicholas was in. I'll add that there were two different topics. Um, the students in New Jersey were working on their writing studies MA thesis, while the students in Norway were in a digital aesthetics seminar. I forget, is this yours or mine? You can take it. <laughs> um, go ahead. <laughs> I, I might have gotten off by one. Anyhow, we, we had separate uh, course sites. They're each WordPress sites. Uh, in both classes, uh, the uh, MA students were uh, writing up their research in their own blogs. They were syndicated to these two different sites. And they, uh, so we had two different um, spaces on the internet for their work, but then we also tied things quite um, beautifully together with other writing tools and other uh, platforms that we were using together. So, of course, we are doing uh, Twitter, and of course, we have to make a Twitter tags hash cloud. Thank you, Martin Hoxie. Uh, we, we, did, we did try to have a Slack, and that'll be a thing we come back to. We thought we could create a little bit more of overlap in Slack, and um, something didn't exactly uh, connect there, but we did initially um, have some things. Uh, I wanted my students to learn about hypothesis for um, social annotation. And I also want to introduce them to uh, using RSS feeds to um, not only read each other's blogs, but I had my students sort of start developing their own sets of uh, information feeds that would help their research. So this is a glimpse of our students on both sides of the uh, Atlantic. On the left, uh, you see the New Jersey students. On the right, you see the Norwegian students. And one of the things we did do through the Slack is we created these little hello videos uh, to each other. We're not going to play them here, but they're worth coming back to. They're marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things we wanted to share out in this quick minute or 15 minutes that we have is the idea of how to seed research in a networked learning experience. So we're arguing that certain infrastructuring moves are, need, so are needed in order to facilitate that possibility. The first move that we wanted to share with you is the use of virtually connecting as a kind of forum for uh, learning for each, of our for each of our student groups. So in this particular um, example, we, um, we dialed in to the digital media and learning conference that occurred this fall, 2017, and um, in that conference, we spoke with Henry Jenkins. Um, in my digital aesthetics seminar, we were reading quite a bit of Henry um, because one of the uh, important themes of the course was participatory culture. So it was a really wonderful example of sort of leveling the field and um, having students directly connect with well-known um, contributors to that field. Um, one of the powerful, powerful aspects of what happened there is 
that one of our students, Catherine, um, who's interested in pursuing a um, MA thesis on uh, the deviant art community in particular, um, she was able to uh, speak directly with Henry about the formulations of her thesis and fine tune her angle and her perspective on it. Um, so that's an example, again, of a specific kind of infrastructuring move that um, is powerful for student learners. Catherine was terribly nervous, and so, but she, she did beautifully, and she was, um, um, uh, I mean, young students, they're really worried about um, not appearing foolish, and they want to have their research ideas validated, and to be able to ask directly of the godfather of participatory, participatory culture was a really great move. Um, another idea I had was, again, um, it's almost like doing virtual connecting again, is how can we bring uh, some expertise into uh, my writing studies, uh, master's students. First of all, I don't know much about literature, so I have to rely on other people um, to bring in as experts. So I asked some people to come in um, for a hangout with my students, and each of my students had 10 minutes to pitch their thesis idea um, to some people and just get kind of some open feedback. And so uh, all of them really said that that was a, a pivotal moment um, for them to realize of these external experts that were available and, and willing also to connect with them uh, after the session. And, and also in Thesis Tank, no one wins or loses. Well, everybody wins. I think that's the premise. Mm -hmm. um, uh, before we play this next video, I'll just say that uh, open, uh, open willy-nilly doesn't work unless you sort of think about anchors for uh, students to become empowered, to ask the right questions, and to direct those questions towards connectedness in particular ways. If it's just, why don't you throw out a tweet about this question, uh, even in a hashtag environment that might have some attention, it doesn't y necessarily yield back the kind of results that are empowering for students. So those two examples of infrastructuring moves are more specific ways students become empowered in an open, in an open environment. Let's hear from the students. Uh, and also I want to add, I mean, one of the, like, the lowest tech thing that was maybe the most effective was email. It was connecting my students with some people who had very specific uh, uh, expertise or references or other people they could connect to in the field. So just introducing your students by uh, another colleague by email worked really well. Um, I had this grand plan I'd be able to bring my students to the conference, um, but that didn't come short. But we have two of them who kind of re um, sent some videos about their response to the experience. Hi, my name is Marissa and I'm a student of Professor Alan Levine and Dr. Mia Zamora at the Kane University English and Writing Studies MA program here in New Jersey. Hello, my name is Laura Lopez. I am a senior university student enrolled in the Writing Studies program. My thesis is a study of personhood in young adult science fiction dystopian literature. My thesis is basically a creative writing project centered around a series of fictional conversations with my father who passed away on 9-11. What I've liked about this semester is that it's been a really interesting way of exploring new technological ways of gathering data for our individual research projects. Um, another aspect of the program that I really loved was um, in addition to being a student, I'm a, a mother and a, a full-time teacher, so each of our sessions were um, was run through a Google Hangout, so being able to connect remotely was really convenient. And again, you f I felt connected to both my um, classmates and my professor. My thesis is about technology and implementing it into daily life, so it was interesting to explore that in my own life, for example, using different tools. Um, there were three tools that stood out to me that we used that were new to me. Um, it was Zotero, Hypothesis, and Feedly. Um, something else that I liked about the network nature of this seminar is that we were able to meet people from all around the world that we otherwise wouldn't likely encounter organically. And that was a really cool experience because you got to meet people who might know about your topic and they could really help you. And that, re that, helped, that happened a couple times throughout the course of the semester and it was a really excellent opportunity. One of my favorite aspects of the course was the thesis tank that we did early on in the fall seminar. And it was basically a, a Google Hangout where a panel of scholars in related fields um, 
were willing and able to give us advice and feedback on our thesis. Um, so we kind of gave them an elevator pitch and they were, they were ready with resources and just good insight. And that experience really helped to shape the, the direction of my project very early on. And not only that, but after the thesis tank session was over, many of these experts, you know, connected with me via email or Twitter or by posting comments on my blog. So that experience was definitely one that was well worth it and really made me feel connected and supported by a community larger than just Kane University. I've had a great experience in this network class, and I recommend it to everyone. And now we have Nicholas's experience. So Nicholas is my student in Norway, and um, he was going to share a bit of his own experience in the in the seminar and in the networked context. Uh, yeah, so I took part in this uh, seminar last semester. Uh, found it really interesting. Uh, my initial thoughts when we started this semester uh, was that my, my interest, my key interest at that time was participatory culture. And I really enjoyed the thought of this silent majority, uh, basically the, the larger user group of uh, the web that doesn't speak up or do anything. Uh, but mm -hmm. as the semester progressed, I got more and more into the notion of being networked and using your networks for more than just uh, a social theme. Mm -hmm. And towards the end of the semester, I kind of shifted my focus from participatory culture and the silent majority and onto uh, networked education and how you could use participatory culture in a educational way and in an educational environment. Uh, so that was basically how I progressed during the semester. Started at one point with participatory culture mm -hmm. and ending with the same theme, just way more specific, and mm -hmm. something I actually find more interesting. Yeah, so uh, we thought we would end on that note because we thought it was an organic and um, uh, provocative uh, sense of what can happen when you seed uh, research in a networked environment and um, things grow from an initial perspective into one that might very well grow out of the practice itself. So thank you, and we've finished early, so that means we can have a conversation a bit if you're curious about anything. <laughs> oh, microphone. I thought you were going to cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> no questions for you. <laughs> but I do have a question for you, Mia. You yeah. brought up a point which I think is fascinating, is the idea of building infrastructure around that sense of openness. Yeah. And can you talk more about that? Because that's course. really compelling to me. Thank, thank you so much for opening that up, because I think that's really important. Um, so I've been an advocate, as you know, for a long time of connected learning. And I think that those theoretical models for learning might be helpful. In this particular case, connected learning really gets to your question in a way. So um, as I said before, I think the open uh, context is powerful and uh, definitely might lead to a sense of empowerment in students, but it could also leave them um, at risk or, or kind of just lost at sea. So how do we infrastructure in a way that's powerful? Connected learning really helps us home, home in on, on the specific kind of sense of pillars of what makes for transformative connection. So I'm just going to review some of those pillars in the theory and then maybe even think a little bit out loud about what moves we made or how they connect to those moves. So one of the things that's really important is the notion of self-driven interest. That is, students come into classrooms with things they have passion about and those things should have play in the classroom. They should have a role to play within the conversations that occur in the classroom. So that's the first thing. Another idea is the notion of shared purpose. So a community of learners come together for a course experience and there at first is just this sort of notion of getting to know each other. But over time, um, one can uh, uh, apprehend a sense of uh, shared values or something that, that everybody suddenly uh, feels a kind of shared commitment for. And that should play a role in what happens in the classroom. Another pillar of connected learning 
is the idea of peer-supported learning. So it's not only the instructor in a hierarchical fashion that has the knowledge to sort of pass down, but rather that everyone in the room has something to bear on um, what we discover together. So the co-learner model of learning. Um, another aspect of the learning theory is uh, simply academic oriented learning and that's where the instructor can through experience show all kinds of sort of ways to sort through thinking and analysis and some of those moves that we see infrastructurally are the tools you know some of the tools uh, and then of course that uh, kind of training that comes from the field is also evident I think in the conversations uh, the the kinds of things that happen in terms of building a lit review those are academically oriented um, uh, procedures and experiences that students can have. Um, another important pillar, I'm trying to think, I'm, hmm. uh, there's, I think there's one that I'm missing right now that I'll think of later and get very upset that I've forgotten. <laughs> but that does, I think just those things alone, gives you a sense of the kinds of things that move away just from, okay, here's the open environment into how can we listen to each other and build relationships? Because ultimately, um, the openness is important for breaking down barriers, for um, teaching beyond the, the four walls that we exist in spatially, but openness doesn't go all the way. And so um, those ideas like the thesis tank or a virtually connected session with a leader in the field, we, Alan and I often call those studio visits and other learning experiments we do together because <laughs> um, we want to give it a feel of stopping by and catching someone at work naturally. Um, those kinds of uh, things I think are infrastructuring moves that facilitate connected learning and connection. Uh, we're out. Oh, I just want to say also, like, infrastructure sounds like big, permanent, rigid structures. I yeah. mean, we're talking about stuff that we swap out on the fly and, and you can do very quickly uh, to change. I mean, one thing is, like, I realized my students, they didn't know any, they've never talked to a reference librarian. And I'm like, you're missing out on the most incredible thing in the library. And they, <laughs> they know about the databases and the chairs and the Wi-Fi. But it's like, if you don't know how to, like, formulate a question to bring to a reference librarian, um, you're really missing out. And so... That's a non-technological tool. Yeah, just to, s to back up what Alan said is, it's so important to think of that word infrastructuring more as in the way we're using it or the intonation that we're bringing to it is a move. It's a strategy, not necessarily a building of a solid thing that will always stay the same.